Welcome everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I want to talk about a very popular topic when it comes to bed bugs and bed bug treatment. And that's what I have over here to my right. And this is a big group of all natural bed bug sprays. Recently, there was an article published in one of our trade magazines called PCT or Pest Control Technology that says uh, that talked about natural pesticides for bed bug control. Do they work? And the study actually looked at a bunch of these sprays and was probably one of the first studies that actually looked at a bunch of these sprays and how well they work at killing bed bugs when the bed bugs are sprayed on contact. And so I'm going to get back to this study in a few minutes. But what I want to talk a little bit about is what I know and what I don't know when it comes to these sprays. Some of the things that I've said in the past and how this study and other things have changed some of those, those feelings and, and where I think we're going in the future. And so let me say up front that a lot of what I'm about to say, you know, there's a million of these sprays out there and a million different manufacturers. And some of these manufacturers are very aggressive when it comes to people talking about these types of sprays. I guarantee this video stimulates God knows how many angry emails from all kinds of different people. And so the bottom line, what I want to say is what I'm going to talk about is some of my experiences with these manufacturers. Not all the manufacturers are alike, and everything that I say is not necessarily going to apply to all of the different products that are out there. But I am going to make some you know, claims and tell you a little bit about what I know, because I've dealt with these guys a lot. And so when we talk about these sprays, one of the things that I've said in the past is that a lot of these sprays, in most instances, will probably kill bed bugs when the bed bugs are sprayed directly. But when it comes to killing bed bugs on contact, my opinion has been there's a lots of other better options out there. You know, you could use a vacuum, you could use a steamer. You know, there's a million other things that you could do to kill bed bugs if you can see them. And so, you know, I don't see a necessary a need to use a lot of these all natural products. But if you as a homeowner want to use something like this, I've never really had an issue with it. As long as you're applying it consistent with how the label says that you should apply it and you're not over applying them all around your house, you know, I've never had a major issue with them. Most of them probably kill bed bugs on contact, at least that's what I've thought about in the past and I, and I still kind of feel that way. Um, and so I've never had an issue with them. I've just thought there's been a lot of better options. And then when we talk about the pest control industry, you know, one reason why a lot of pest control companies don't use them is because of what I had talked about before, which is that there isn't a lot of efficacy data on these sprays. Like I said, there's so many of them out there, and we just don't know how many of them work. And so pest control companies kind of shy away from them because they say, well, does this work? Doesn't it work? And a lot of people don't really know. And so that's one reason why the pest control industry doesn't use them. And then from my perspective in the company that I work for, one of the reasons why I, as the technical director, don't recommend that we use them is that a lot of these sprays we have found in using them, and again, this is one of these statements that I don't want to group all of the sprays into, but a lot of them, is that a lot of these sprays we have shown in our offices will actually stain some fabrics. And a lot of the manufacturers will tell you, well, you just need to find a discrete area of the couch to apply a little bit of the spray on, see if it stains, and then if it doesn't, you can go ahead and do what you have to do. And if it does, you may want to, you know, not use it on that couch. Well, from an industry perspective, from a pest control company perspective, I can't deal with that. You know, I can't have my technicians out there spraying couches. Maybe it stains sometimes. Maybe it doesn't. Now they have to find a discrete area on the couch to spray first. They have to wait for it to dry to see if it stains. It creates all kinds of problems from a pest control company perspective. And like I said, not all of these sprays stain, but some of them do. And that is a problem at least from my perspective as a pest control company. And so that's why I had not necessarily recommended them to many pest control companies. But, you know, the efficacy data is one of the big issues. Because a lot of these sprays fall into the 25B category of products, which means that the active ingredients in them are not regulated by the EPA, and therefore a lot of these products can put, or I should say a lot of these, these manufacturers can put these sprays out on the market with little to no efficacy data and, you know, loose at best restrictions in regards to what they can say about that product. And that's been where a lot of the attention has been paid is the claims that some of these sprays make about the efficacy, you know, kills bed bugs on contact, solves bed bug infestations. And, you know, that's been where a lot of the concern has been raised because consumers in some instances have been misled. And so, 
that's kind of the overview of where we've been, some of the things that I know, some of the things that I have said about these sprays and, and what I know. What I can also tell you is because there aren't a lot of restrictions on these sprays, a lot of times these manufacturers, and again, this isn't everybody, but a lot of these sprays are smaller companies. They may not necessarily have done a lot of research on formulation, on shelf life. You know, when these manufacturers contact me, one of the things I always get is that, you know, well, I want to look at your spray, and the, one of the first things we'll almost always say is, let me send you one right from our manufacturer. That way I make sure you get, you know, a fresh bottle. You know, and then you look at the label, and it doesn't say anything about shelf life. Well, if you're telling me you want to send me a fresh bottle, that suggests to me that over time your spray and the efficacy of your spray may break down. But there's nothing on your label that says that, and you're not saying anything to any of the people you're distributing it to about that. That's a problem. And so that's another thing you want to be careful of. You know, I've had some of these sprays sitting in my office for months, and, you know, they come nice and clear like this to start, and then I look at it six months later and it's brown. Hmm, that's a problem. And, you know, it doesn't say anything about shelf life on the bottle. And so that's kind of where the issue has been, is that the regulation with some of these 25B products, you know, it's just not there. And a lot of these manufacturers are just throwing products on the market, and we just don't know anything about them. And so this study started to shed some light on that, and it looked at a handful of the products that are out there. And again, there are so many, it's unbelievable. But looked at a handful of them, and what they found is that a few of them were fairly effective with this controlled application rate. And so that's another thing I'm going to talk about in a second. But in this study, they found a few of them were fairly effective, close to 100% mortality over the course of a week. A bunch of them in the study, though, did not demonstrate much more than 50% of a mortality. Now, what I want to talk about, though, is some of the things that I talked about before, which was application rate. So in this study, what they did is they put these sprays into what we call a spray tower. And what that does is it applies a very, very specific amount of pesticide to a given area at a very specific rate. And that's a good way to get a feel on whether or not a spray works, because you know exactly how much is being applied. And that's how a lab study in a controlled environment should be done, and so I fully support that. But... When you get a lot of these sprays, they come in ready to use spray bottles. And it says on that label, and one of the take homes for this is that you want to make sure you follow those label directions as carefully as you possibly can. But a lot of times they'll tell you what to apply and how to apply it and how much to apply it. Well, when you hit that ready to use spray bottle, how much is coming out? I have no idea. And spray to spray, it can be dramatically different. You know you know how spray bottles work. If you're cleaning your windows at home, you hit the spray twice, you get two full sprays, and then you get an empty one, and then you get like two or three half sprays, and then you get a full spray. Well, how do you know what you're applying? And so when I conducted my study on one of these products this study looked at, which was a product called Stop Bugging Me, I found close to 100% mortality over the course of a week when I sprayed bugs directly. But when I did my study, I used the ready-to-use spray bottle, and I used it as though a homeowner would be using it. And so I hit those bugs with two, three, or four sprays, made sure they were thoroughly wet, then transferred them to an environment, and in this, a clean environment, and in this study, they used a very controlled setting. And so there could have very easily been an application rate difference in regards to what I did versus what this study showed, and that's why we may have found slightly different results. And so the bottom line with these products is about consistency. You know, and, and sometimes the consistency isn't there, whether it's the consistency of the product itself, whether it's the application rate, whether it's the effectiveness. And that question mark is why I'm kind of changing my position a little bit on these. Again, if you're using them, do I think it's a major issue? I, I Probably not, as long as you're not over-applying them and, and going crazy with them, and you're following those label directions very carefully. But there's a lot of question marks about these products, and, and a, a lot of times these manufacturers don't even have the answers for you. And so be careful when you're out there looking at these products. Be careful what you're buying, and be careful what you're buying into in regards to their claims. And that's kind of what I wanted to cover real quick when it comes to these all-natural sprays. I know I didn't give you a lot of direct answers, but the problem is, is there isn't a lot of direct answers when it comes to this topic. And so if you have any questions about these, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com. I hope I can give you answers to the questions that you have. Um, and that's the story. So if you have any questions, uh, you know the email address, and I hope to see everybody or talk to everybody soon enough.